Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. I know I haven't been sharing videos for some time now because uh, I just recently got a new job as a senior UX designer here in Canada. So I took some time to get settled in and uh, start working on the projects, but I'm back now. Do you want to learn about Figma and get started with your UX design career in 2022? And so this is the video that you may want to watch to learn about the top 10 things you need to know to get started. But first, if you like my content, please give a like to this video. It helps the algorithm and also helps me and subscribe to my channel as it motivates me to create more such videos for you. Share this video with your friends, with your classmates, with your colleagues who want to get started with Figma in 2022. With that being said, let's dive in. So some of the few advantages of Figma are that Figma is basically collaborative by design. That means you and your teammates, like your colleagues or your classmates can work on the same design file at the same time and all the updates will be saved in real time. The best thing about Figma is that it works with any computer because it's browser based. So you can use any browser and it doesn't matter what operating system you're using, right? The other one is that it's basically free for individuals. So to help you get started, Figma has an individual plan that is free forever. It has some limitations, obviously, but the good part also about this is that if you are a student or an educator, you can get the professional version for free as well. With that being said, uh, let's log in. So if you haven't logged in, you, you may want to create an account, but I already have an account with them. So that's all you need basically. So I'm going to log in with my credentials. That's it. I can get started. So when you log in or you create your account for the first time, your screen may look something like this. Um, it's, uh, it's the first screen after you log in or create account where all right on the left side, you have the recent filter where you can see the recent files that you may have opened when you're coming back. If you have any drafts saved or you're currently working on a project, your files will be saved in the drafts folder. And below that, you can also favorite some files that, uh, you want to access very easily and quickly. One good thing about Figma is that they have the community feature built right in. So you and I and thousands of other members who use Figma have the option to share their work with the community to get feedback and also share what they've been working on. So if you go to the community, you'll be able to see uh, like, you know, different files and different project and different work for inspiration, um, for different jam sessions, uh, what other people and how other people they've been creating design systems and some of the visual assets and also the code for development. So how to design for development. So you can browse through the community work and it's, it's a lovely thing. Uh, more and more people are sharing their work with Figma community. So I'm going to go back for this example. And for this video, I'm going to work with this rental car community file. I don't know exactly who shared this with the community, but I'm grateful. And we're going to just like, you know, open this file. And all of this is in the browser, by the way, I'm not uh, like, I didn't have to download Figma application. You can though, but you don't need to. So this is the project and this is the UI that comes up when you open any design file. So let's take a UI tour quickly of Figma. So when you open up a design file, you will see that up top in the center, you have the name of the file, obviously. And if you want to rename this file, you can just double click and just rename the file name. Also, you see the folder it's saved into. So you have easy access to that as well. Coming to the left and on the top, we have the toolbar for Figma with the different tools that you can use to create your artwork. So uh, we have the file menu, which is standard, I think in all applications. And um, next to that, we have the select tool and we have the frame tool. We have the rectangles tool. And if you click on the accordion, you'll get more expanded options like lines, arrows, ellipses, and different shapes with their own different additional parameters. 
we also have the pen tool uh, which i think is a really good tool and the pencil tool as well uh, you can also create bezier curves with the pen tool and if you've been using other design tools i think this is similar to that as well but it's really powerful and we have the text tool and next to that we have the resources wherein you can see all the components that you've created in your designs and uh, if next to that is the plugins tab where you can browse for different plugins and use them when you need them so one good thing about the components is that you can also browse the libraries and create design systems and share those pattern libraries with your teammates so when you share them with your teammates and with your colleagues within your organization they'll be able to see them in this panel over here now the good thing about figma is that any file any design file can be shared or saved as a design system so if you're working on like a branding uh, style guide or you want to create a design system and maintain one for your company you can create one file wherein you create and maintain all your components and your pattern libraries and share them with your colleagues and your project uh, teammates so they can use them as a design system in their designs and work collaboratively next thing is that below uh, below the uh, the toolbar we have the layers panel and next to the layers panel we have the asset panel so it's the same as the components um, it's just a different view so you, you can also browse through the the design systems from here as well now within the layers panel we have certain organization features such as pages so you can organize your artworks and your workflows in pages if you want to so let's say like this is uh, for this example i only have two artboards or two frames in figma which we'll talk about in a moment but you have this work area the gray space in the middle that's called the work area and you have such a huge space to work on so um i doubt this will ever be filled with uh, all the artboards but if you have like so many frames and so many designs and so many screens you can organize them in pages now the different ideas that i've seen people use to organize uh, screens in pages are um if you want to like you know segregate uh, your processes like your wireframes and your low fidelity mockups and your high fidelity mockups uh, you can use and divide them and store them or save them in pages like one page for each of them alternatively what you can do is you can also have some like you know one page for all your brainstorming ideas and then a next page for like structured designs as well the next I, the next option also can be like if your design or if your project involves multiple workflows or multiple tasks you can organize and segregate each workflow into its own page there's tons of options available for organizing your designs in pages and i think it's a great tool for us to be able to organize our design files below that we have the layers panel and it's similar to all the other design applications as well so you have um, all the layers one below the other um, saved up and you can also kind of expand or collapse these views to get an overview of how many artboards you have right so uh, that that's a good thing and i always say like it's always better to organize your layers and group them if you need to coming over to the right hand side we have properties panel so we within the properties panel we have the design tab and depending like this is basically a tool dependent tab so what i mean by that is that the information you have here changes depending on what you have selected and also changes depending on what tool you are using so if i'm using or if i'm selecting um, a text layer my options here will be different from when i have selected an image right you get the idea so moving on the next tab over here within the pro within the properties panel is the prototype tab so you can use this uh, when you're ready to create those wires and your interactions and bring your designs to life a lot of the interactions are similar to uh, the other design applications but there are certain differences which uh, i think we'll cover over time in future videos so again make sure you're subscribed because you don't want to miss them 
The next tab is the inspect tab and this is mainly for the developers because when you share your designs with your developers they can come to the inspect tab to get the code that they need and again they can actually select the layers that they want to uh, get the code of and then they'll be able to get all the code whether it is a web application so it's css or whether it is ios or android so depending on what you're designing for, you'll be able to get the codes from there. And uh, I think that's it for uh, the basic overview of the UI. Now let's get into some more tools and options. All right, so let's start by creating a new artboard or in Figma, they're called frames and they are much more than artboards. So you can actually just come to the toolbar on the top and select the frame tool or you can use the shortcut F. And when you come into the frame tool, you have the presets to choose from, and there are a lot of them, like a lot of them for our phone screens, for tablet screens, for desktop screens, for watch screens, and also for social media as well. So you have a lot of options to begin with, but let's choose an iPhone Pro Max. Uh, that's probably too large for this one. So uh, it's okay. For this example, I think we can continue with this one. Right. So once I create a frame, you have a lot more options. And the very cool option I have uh, in Figma is you can have corner radius for frames as well. So you see when I turn the option over here, um, I can actually add some corner radius or I can individually change some of them if I want to. Moving on to the next one. How do you add shapes or colors or gradients? So next to the frame tool in the toolbar, you have the shape options. So let's create a rectangle first. And I think the rectangle tool is pretty similar to the ones uh, we already know, but here's a good thing. If you double click into any shape that you create in Figma, you can add actually anchor points to the design as well. And when you, once you add anchor points, if you hold on control, you can convert it into a Bezier curve. So with these handles um, that you see over here, I'm going to keep this curve as it is. And when you just double click out of it, you'll see that you have that shape as well. Now I'm just going to, uh, for this shape on the properties panel, if you want to add any colors, you can do so by going to the fill section here. So I'm going to go here and select like a good old color. Uh, doesn't matter. I'm not looking for like a visual aesthetic design here. It's just more, more for explaining you. So I have the option of adding gradients like linear gradients, radial, angular, and also an image within the rectangle or within any shape as well. So I'm going to keep it for solid for now. But again, you have you like, you know, you get the idea. You have a lot of options to choose from from here as well. So we have the shape here and again, you can actually add multiple fills on top of one other within Figma as well. Now, this is, I think, unlike any other design application, but uh, it's good. Like once you have, you can combine like solid colors and gradients and like multiple gradients and whatnot. So you, the options are endless. I'm going to stick to one color for now. Below that, we have the stroke option. So I can add like boundaries or like borders as well. So you can choose the color and you can also change the thickness of the stroke and select whether the stroke is going to be within the boundaries or centered or outside the boundaries, right? But we don't need that right now. So I'm just going to keep it for fill. Below stroke, you can also add some effects like drop shadows like the layer blurs and background blurs and inner shadows as well um, and you can also add multiple uh, layers for effects within that same single shape and the last option here is to export any individual layer if you want to above that we have the constraints so this uh, we'll talk about it in just a few moments and above that, we have the basic position details and the width and the height details and what the angles are. Above that, we have the Boolean operators like aligning to the left, center or vertical align and all of that. So that's it for shapes and colors. And I encourage you to play around within like Figma with different shapes so you'll get hang of it. 
The next thing I want to talk about is the responsive resizing. So let's say you are designing an artboard or a frame for um, a mobile application. But again, you want to design for different screen sizes, right? So you want to add those constraints within Figma, within the design file. So no matter what the frame size is or if the screen width increases, you don't want to be seeing the stuff like this on a tablet, right? So what we'll do is we'll select or we'll select the image and we'll come to the constraints. So you can actually select constraints like um, you can align or fix the layer or the element to certain sides like left or right or center or scale according to the size of the artboard. So if I select the artboard and select scale, it's going to scale accordingly, right? And uh, you can also do that for the same thing for vertically. So I want to be able to scale the image horizontally and vertically. So it's going to do that. Now this is only horizontal scaling. So the image actually enlarges as we increase the width or the height of the artboard or the frame. So you have a lot more options for constraints and designing for responsive resizing uh, within Figma. And I think it is a great advantage. So make sure you kind of think of responsive resizing when you're designing and working on your projects. The next thing I want to talk about is layout grids. So when you select a frame or when you select um, an artboard or a screen, you see you have the option to add any layout grids if you want to. So for example, in this project, we uh, the designer already added layout grids and uh, to both these frames actually and they align their elements and their layer according to the design grid, the layout grid that they were using. Now, the best thing about Figma is that you can also add multiple uh, layout grids. Like for example, the one we see here was a nine columns grid, but then here is another one, which is just a pixel grid of the sizes 10 pixels each. So I can add and I can actually edit it to eight pixel grids as well, depending on uh, my preferences. You can add multiple ones and I think that's a great thing. So we'll just keep it to default for now. Let's talk about adding and creating components in your designs. So for example, in this design, I see that I have a button that I may want to reuse later. So what I can do is I can just select the text layer uh, and the shape and select both of them and then right click and create a component. So that's one option and that, that's one way to work. But uh, the, working with shapes with components is actually like, you know, it has its own limitations. So instead of having or using shapes, what I recommend or what I think a good practice would be is to use frames. Yes, you heard that right. So uh, remember I mentioned earlier that frames are not only artboards, they are much more than that. And in Figma, basically you can create a frame for pretty much anything. So as an example, what I can say is that like this search bar could be a frame. Um, this button could be a frame. Uh, this group or a car could be a frame. And within that group or within that frame, even this button could be a frame. And this image could be added with in a frame so you can kind of nest frames within other frames to build off uh, off of each frame and each layer to create a good uh, hierarchy of frames and then it gives you much more possibilities for example um, auto layouts they are only available for frames and so you you may want like you definitely want to take advantage of auto layouts Right. So let's see an example. So instead of using a shape for a button like a rectangle or rounded rectangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a frame. Um, I'm going to create a button, give it a fill. So I'll use the color picker and then I'll round off the corners to match the design. So here you go. This shape is again similar to this button, a rectangle, but this is a frame. And you can see that in the layers panel, it has a different icon next to it, whereas a rectangle has a different icon. I'm just going to copy this text and bring it here. So now you have 
this button which is a frame now let's say in certain cases you want to add an icon next to the button right so let's say you have a button with some text and an icon next to it what you can do is within that frame you can enable auto layout and now you see when you hover over uh, the button or the frame you have the option to add like you know different padding on all the four sides you can edit those padding from like this side over here or individually uh, on all the four sides but I'm going to keep it the same and over here what you may want to do is select the alignment so whether you want to align all the contents of that frame to the right to the top left uh, to the top right to the right to the bottom and you get the idea so with this button i'm going to select the center alignment so whatever content i add now here is going to be centered within that frame and the best part is with auto layout is that i can change the text as well and it's going to stay centered with that button so this this thing is not possible by using shapes and that's why using frames for components is um, recommended so now i'm going to place this in the center and with that frame selected i can just right click and create a component of that frame and um, with that frame selected what i'm going to do is add some constraints to that as well so i'm going to horizontally center it so when my artboard is increasing in size the button will remain center and again with that frame selected i'm going to keep the button vertically aligned to the bottom so again as my artboard increases in height this button will stay and stick to those parameters so when you combine auto layout and when you combine responsive resizing i think the power uh, you have over your designs is much more so definitely i'd recommend taking advantage of all these features in figma so once i have the component um, i can actually just copy it by pressing command or control C and then creating a copy of that button. So I've created an instance of that button which I can reuse this instance like how many ever times I want to. Alternatively, you what you can do is if you want to create a copy, you can press Alt and then just drag that layer. So you will see when you press Alt, the cursor is going to change and uh, that's how you know that you're basically duplicating it, right? now you can use these instances anywhere else in your design but they'll obviously be linked to the main component so if i change the ordering of the main component you see that all the instances have updated as well now obviously there's a lot more that uh, you can do with components and instances we'll definitely create another video especially for components in figma but just for an overview what you can also do is create a variant of this component so when you just right click and uh, go to the main component you can add a variant now you can see that we have added a variant so i'm going to go to the frame of this variant and um, add a stroke and remove the fill so the stroke i think i can add or like you know increase in width and change the color of this to black change this color to black and i have a secondary component or a secondary button so this i can use this as a primary button this one as a secondary button so within one component i have much more to work with and like that in any instance what i can do is right click on that instance and change the variant and change it to variant 2 so here i have a copy of the secondary button isn't it great now let's talk about exporting your designs or your artwork 
So you can actually export individual layers within your designs as well. So for example, if I select this uh, image layer, I can come to the properties panel and the last option here is to export. Now I can export that as 1x resolution or 2x resolution or whatever I want and the format as well. The best part is you can preview what is going to be exported and I'll also I can add multiple resolutions I want to export this file or this layer and all of them will be exported with one single click. What you can also do is select the entire frame and then export that entire frame. So again you have the preview of what is going to be exported and you have the options to add multiple resolutions if you want. Alternatively, you can select all the frames on your like, you know, in your workflow and then export them all together. That's also possible. So the options are endless. All right, let's quickly talk about prototyping as an overview uh, because I think uh, it deserves like a specific video on itself. So make sure you're subscribed. So on the properties panel, when you switch to the prototype tab, you'll see that uh, you have a few options to choose from right away. So you have the option to choose when you preview the prototype, what device you want to preview that for. So ideally, if you're designing for iOS, you may want to select these models. And again, you have some Android screens as well. And then Apple watches like watch screens or tablets or even some web screens. Or you can select a custom fit. You can also select the background for the preview. I'll show that to you just in a moment. But before doing all of that, what we can do is create those wires and create those interactions. So let's say in my example, when the user clicks on this Honda Civic, they want to be taken to this view where they can read more details. So I'm going to click and drag on that plus icon and uh, drop my arrow onto the destination screen. And with that, I have different options to choose from and upgrade my um, interaction or that wire. So I want that trigger to be a tap because it's a mobile screen and I want to navigate to this artboard. Um, this is going to be the type of trigger that you can work with. So I want to just dissolve into the from source to destination or you want to move in. The good thing is that Figma gives you a preview of how that's going to look. So you can like, you know, play around with the easing options and also the time for your interaction. So you can actually build those interactions one by one um, in Figma. One good thing about uh, Figma is that they also have this interaction or the trigger type called back. So it's basically going to reverse the interaction or the previous interaction which landed on this screen. So I don't have to basically like, you know, copy uh, every uh, interaction and then add it in reverse. I can do that by default. The best thing about it is that now you can also preview your prototypes in a separate tab. So if you're presenting to your stakeholders or you're actually adding this within a presentation, you can also embed this presentations. So here uh, you can see that we have the prototype in action. So when I click on it, it's going to take me to the uh, this next screen and uh, I can also like, you know, play around with my interaction. Now, obviously I need to uh, adjust my screen size or my frame size according to the device but that's a design question so you get the idea of what you can do with this let's talk about sharing your designs so once you're done creating your designs or creating your prototypes what you can do is you can click on share and if you want to share this with your uh, teammates or your colleagues in your organization you can simply enter their email addresses and multiple email addresses with a comma and uh, you can uh, say if they can only view the design or they can also edit the design um, or you can actually share this link with anyone and wh whoever has this link can open the file and work with it. You can also embed this code and put this code in your portfolio or wherever you're sharing your portfolio, whether it is Behance or any other website, um, it's going to uh, show this 
prototype and uh, the users will be able to interact with it that i think is a good idea so once you copy your link you can share it with any medium like you know slack or teams or um, email or chat or anything alternatively you can also publish your projects to the community we just talked about in the in the beginning of the video so a lot of users uh, actually publish their work with the community so other people can take inspiration from them and i think it's a great tool so definitely if you feel like you want to share your work with the community do that by all means so those were the top 10 things that you need to remember to get started with figma in 2022 i cannot wait for you to get started and work and create different designs in Figma. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments or you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. If you have any questions, like you know, you have a design process question, if you're stuck in your project or you need some inspiration or feedback or critique on your projects or your capstone projects or your uh, company projects as well, um, feel free to talk to me. There's a link down in the description which you can use to book a time with me, whether a 30 minute session or a one hour session, whatever it is, I can talk to you about user experience. Now, I cannot wait again to talk to you as well. So I'm looking forward to speaking to you. So make sure if you want to talk to me, uh, click on that link and book a call. And with that, that's all for this video. I'm going to share more videos in the future. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe so you don't miss one of my videos. Also share this video with your classmates, with your colleagues, so they can get started with Figma as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.